Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Justin and we're doing my favorite video series here today. And that is my favorite six stocks in the market. This is December 2022 edition. I normally put this out at the beginning of the month, so it's getting out about 10 days later than normally. So I do apologize for that. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about my favorite six stocks right now in the market. And if you get some value out of this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel a lot. I personally appreciate it. And let's just jump right into the first stock. All right, so the first stock I want to talk about here today is Generac, ticker symbol GNRC. In fact, I think this is the first time I've actually talked about this stock uh, so far on this channel. My Patreon uh, members know this pretty well because I've talked about it numerous times over on Patreon, but this is definitely a stock I like right now. Over the past year, the stock has dropped almost 80% percent just a absolutely free fall right now it's around ninety dollars a share it got all the way up well over four hundred dollars a share just uh several months ago so it's taken a big deep dive in the last several months so this company is most known for their portable generators and uh, currently as of actually as the last quarter 66 percent of their total revenue comes from residential 26 percent comes from commercial eight percent from other they sell about 85 percent of their sales domestically so in the united states and 15 percent uh, internationally. Now they do sell other things besides generators. Uh, you can see kind of examples down here, but they mainly sell, or at least the the majority of the revenue comes from generators still overall. Uh, they were founded back in 1959. They went public in 2010. They own about 71% of all the generator space that's out there, which is incredibly impressive, especially if you look at their competitors, because the next competitor in line is Kohler, which owns about 15% in that space. In 2018, they did a strong push and continue to make a strong push for cleaner energy. When I was reading through a bunch of articles about this company over the last six months, uh, their big knock on them that they... They use the old, you know, uh, gas power generators and et cetera, et cetera. That, that's not true. If you look at the stuff they've been making over the last few years, uh, there's a strong push to natural gas. So it's a lot cleaner overall. And they made 10 acquisitions just in the last few years uh, towards clean energy. They made more acquisitions than that, but that is just for their clean energy uh, push. And uh, they're, they have industry-leading margins. And we'll talk about some of those here in a little bit. Uh, speaking of acquisitions, so here's the 16 acquisitions they've made uh, over the last uh, looks about six years in total. So they certainly made a lot of noise in the acquisition front, and it's really powered their their margins, their their revenue, and the net pro and net profit margins. And they've done a very very good job in incorporating companies and making them more efficient. Uh, no, no pun intended there. Uh, capital employment, this is a company that has done very well in returning money back to shareholders. Whoops, let me go back to that real quick. They have strong organic growth. We've already talked about their mergers and acquisitions. They've done a really good job on paying down their debt over the last few years. Their balance sheet is in a really good place right now. And they do return capital to shareholders. In fact, there's about $500 million remaining on their current share repurchase uh, program as is. Look at the last 10 years of data for them going back to 2012. It's been incredibly impressive. So sales per share has grown about 15% per year, earnings 19% per year. This is what's really hurt them over the last year, and that is their cash flow. You can see their cash flow has taken a major dip over the last 12 months and a big piece of that has to do with their inventory and they built up their inventory and they just didn't sell like they were thought they were going to and that really has hurt their cash flow overall and so uh, people who look at their their cash flow and seeing it dip and may be scared but i think this is more of a short-term issue than a long-term issue and you can see that their their margins have been very very good about 18 percent on average over the last three years five years and 10 years overall and like i mentioned before their debt situation is really good so debt over equity is less than 60 uh, percent on average in the last three years currently it's around 62 percent so that is very very solid overall if we look at intrinsic value for this company i think they're only going to grow about five percent per year on the top line we saw they were growing double digits 
on the top line over the last 10 years. I think it's going to be pretty uh, steady over the next uh, couple of years, from 2022 all the way to 2024. I think their operating margins are around 18%, which has been where they've been historically. I think that gives us $152 intrinsic value on this company based on a multiple of 16. And right now, that's almost a 40%. Uh, margin of safety. And I will say this company does do well during events, say a hurricanes or, you know, power outages, things like that. Even think the EV space with people getting more uh, electric vehicles, I do think generator space is really good going out over the next decade. And I think this is just a tremendous company overall. Uh, stock number two is Warner Brothers Discovery to your symbol WBD. Stock is down almost 60% over uh, really year today, I guess, since uh, January. It's trading around $11 here today. Uh, this is a company that was a, a created after the merger from Warner Media and Discovery. So Warner Media came from AT&T. I think one of the reasons why the stock has fallen so much that AT&T shareholders own 70% of the company after the merger. And a lot of those shareholders just didn't care about own, owning Warner Brothers and dump those. Um, overall but it's it's a great company with a lot of fantastic brands from hbo discovery uh, cnn hgtv cartoon network dc looney tunes they have a lot of franchises in the dc arena like batman uh, wonder woman superman and it just goes on and on there now, as far as the 2022 and 2023 outlook, they do believe they're going to be an adjusted EBITDA of around $9 billion for this year. They think they're going to report around $3 billion of free cash flow after costs uh, achieve synergies. Now, this is a company that I have been saying that we're really not going to see a lot of great uh, growth from at least profit margins wise, I think until 2024 when you're trying to mer merge two large companies like this, uh, it just takes a long time to harmonize overall. 2023, they're going to work towards getting adjusted EBITDA of about $12 billion. That should jump up to around $14 billion in 2024. Now, a big negative for this company is their debt situation. Warner Media had about $40 billion of debt, which is crazy. Uh, and AT&T still has a ton of debt on, on their books, but they're able to dump $40 billion from that Warner Media spinoff. And they've been able to pay off about $6 billion through September, which is great. Uh, but they still have around $50 billion of gross debt, which is a lot of money. And that is something they need to deleverage on their, their balance sheet. They need to get their balance sheet in better order. I think they're going to do that, but it's going to take time. Now, valuation for this company, yeah, I expect them to only grow 6% on the top line. That's it per year over the next several years. Uh, now, I think uh, they're going to get around 10 to 11% operating margins five years from now. Now, Discovery alone had around 15% operating margins uh, before the merger. So I do think they can get double digits in, in five years. If they can achieve that with a multiple of 15, the stock should be worth around $24 a share, which is a 50% margin of safety from where it is today. But this is key. Their operating margins have got to increase. They've been negative. They're, this year, it'll be negative. I expect them to be negative next year. I think really 2024 is we're going to start seeing the uptick. For being positive and we could see in the last the latter half of 2023 um, but i do think they're going to be able to achieve double digits of operating margins long term uh, third stock i want to talk about stanley black and decker swk this is a stock that's down about 57 percent over uh, the past year you can see a theme going on here a lot of these stocks had some big crashes and i do think that they're uh, good valuations right now. This is a, a company that has a ton of great brands from Stanley to Black & Decker, uh, DeWalt, Craftsman, Bostitch, uh, list goes on and on, but they have a great group of, of brands that they own. This is a, a company that the majority of their revenue comes from tools and outdoors. You're talking about $12 billion in 2021 versus only about $2.5 billion for their industrial this is a company that has taken on more debt over the last 18 months. They do have a new CEO as of this past summer that is in place now, and he has, I think, a pretty good plan in place to be able to reduce their SG&A expenses by a considerable, a considerable amount, around a billion dollars over the next couple of years. And it's a company that's paid a dividend for 146 years, which is just absolutely 
uh, incredible overall. Speaking of dividends, it's about $3.20 per year per dividend. That's around a 4% dividend yield. They've increased their dividend consecutively for 55 years, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, their payout ratio is a bit higher than I like right now, 83%. I like seeing around 50% or lower. Uh, and that has to do with some of their, their operating income has dropped over the last year. Very similar to, to Generac that, that we talked about earlier. So we kind of look at some of these numbers over the last 10 years. You can see that cash flow has really dipped over the last year. And a very similar to Generac, they brought in a lot of, uh, of raw materials, made a lot of inventory, and they just didn't sell like they thought they were going to. I think uh, management really mismanaged their inventory situation, thinking that uh, uh, the economy was going to still continue, continue to do well going into 2022, and that didn't happen. And we saw the, the war in Ukraine. Also, we're seeing a kind of a recession going on right now, and that's really hurt the company. I think, again, in the short term, very similar to Generac. They look at sales per share. It's grown 5% per year, per year over the last 10 years, 7% for EPS. Uh, ROIC, uh, I like to see 9% or higher. It's around 8%. Uh, their debt situation, I like to see it under a three for net debt over operating income. It's a little over that right now. So that is another thing they need to do is uh, you know, deleverage their, their balance sheet overall. Uh, operating margins have been around 12, 13%, which is uh, fantastic. Now, as far as evaluation for the company, I think they're only going to grow 1% on the top line. So I'm not really optimistic on the top line. Uh, for this coming you know, over the next few years, uh, just because I think this recession that that's coming is going to hurt them for a little while. Um, operating margins, I think, are going to be stabilizing around 13%, which is pretty much in historical averages based on a multiple of 15. That's $135 intrinsic value for Stanley, Black, and Decker, which is over a 40% margin of safety where it's trading at today, which is around $80. Uh, fourth stock I want to talk about is Meta, ticker symbol M-E-T-A. Stock is down over 70% uh, over the last uh, year. Obviously, most people know Meta. It's had some, some uh, just a big crash in, in, in general. Now, despite the crash, you know their family monthly active people have risen quarter over quarter, which is absolutely tremendous. About 3.7 billion people across the globe use their products, which is just incredible overall. Now, expenses as a percentage, percentage of revenue, one thing that really sticks out to me is the research and development. Uh, this one right here. So 33% of their uh, revenue is going to R&D, and that's where the metaverse lies. That's where they're spending all the research and development, uh, mostly in the metaverse right now, among other stuff, but that's where their big push is. Obviously, it's changing the name of the company. And so that is uh, a problem right now. When you have that much increase for your R&D expenses going from, say, you know, almost 20% two years ago to 33%, that hurts your margins overall. Now, if we take a look at their operating margins, they've decreased from 46% two years ago down to 20%. And that has to do with the R&D. So this is a, a company that is spending everything internally and expensing everything up front. So if the metaverse does pan out eventually, they're taking all that expense now, so they'll have less expense in the future. Now, something to keep in mind, too, is that their legacy businesses in Instagram and Facebook have almost 40% operating margins, but uh, with the R&D expenses that they're occurring right now in the metaverse, the overall company is down around 20% as we speak. Some key metrics for the company, absolutely impressive over the last 10 years, uh, sales per share, 39% uh, growth, free cash flow, 38% growth, or ROIC on average has been 16%. Uh, but you get that, but these margins, um, you know, not not where they want to be. I mean, right now it's around 20%, and you can see historically it's been around 38% on average. So that's what's getting a lot of fear to investors, and it's really hard to value for a company that you see these margins suppress over time. But if I say they only grow 8% per year on the top line, and they're able to achieve 30% operating margins in five years. So I'm saying around 25% this year, 18% next year, and then slowly kind of grow to 30% with a multiple of 16. That's $177 uh, intrinsic values. That's almost a 50% margin of safety based on today's stock price.
Next stock I want to talk about is Selenese, ticker symbol CE, where last year the stock is down roughly between 25 and, and 30%. Uh, the company makes acidic acid, they make formaldehyde, nylon compounds, methyl ketone. The shirt that you're wearing, it's a good chance that some of the compounds in there came from Selenese. They have products that go into dozens and dozens of different products and they're uh, over different uh, dozens of really industries in, in general. This is a company that pays a really good dividend. It's just under 3% here today, actually. So this is a little higher. I pulled this, um, I think, a month ago, uh, about $2.72 or $2.72, excuse me, uh, per share annually. This is a company that payout ratio is less than 15%, which is awesome. Their growth for dividends have been 28% per year, which is uh, pretty, pretty impressive overall. One reason the stock has dropped is because of acquisition from DuPont. They bought their M&M business. Uh, however, they do believe that their EBITDA, which is going to be around $900 million this year, I think that will be about uh, around $600 million of operating income increase going forward, which is great, but they did pay $11 billion for this company, which is all cash acquisition, which is going to increase uh, their debt situation, and that scared a lot of investors overall. If you look over the last 10 years, the company has grown sales per share 9% per year, earnings 29%, ROIC has been 15%. They've had really, really solid, solid numbers overall. Even their debt situation has been pretty good. Now that will increase. So it is going to be over a three, which I don't typically like it that way. But I do think that DuPont acquisition, getting more into the polymer space, is going to be a great thing for this company long term. Uh, now, th these are numbers are including that DuPont acquisition. So I think it's going to grow 15% on the top line per year over the next five years. Operating income is going to grow around 11%. Based on a multiple of 14, I think the stock price is worth around $190. I really do, which is margin of safety around 35 to 40% uh, here today. Last one I want to talk about is Douglas Emmett, ticker symbol DEI. Uh, the stock is down almost 50%. Uh, year to date, it's trading around fifteen dollars uh, here today. This is a company that is a REIT, so they own different properties, really in the California, Los Angeles area, and then also in Hawaii. The company was founded fifty years ago in nineteen seventy one. I don't typically invest in REITs, but I really like this one. This one stood out to me because uh, Los Angeles is a really, really hard market to get into. They don't really have a lot of places to build, so they can't have just competitors just come in and just build a bunch of buildings. Can't really do that in Los Angeles, so I do think they have a really good niche there. Uh, they have a lot of office buildings in there, and then in Hawaii, in Honolulu specifically, they have a lot of single family housing. They do a lot of rentals there. So being in Honolulu and Los Angeles, which are some of the biggest markets in the entire world, I just don't think they have a competition that a lot of other REITs see, um, in my personal opinion overall. So their combined portfolio, 65% of their portfolio is in the west side of LA, 24% is in the LA Valley, and 11% is in Honolulu. They pay a really good dividend. It's around 6.5% today. I actually think it's creeping up to almost 7%, about $1.12 annually per share, and it's grown about 8% per year over the last 10 years. Now, if we go on and take a look at a book value per share for this company, it is the lowest it has been over the last five years. It's trading around a one right now, and historically, they've been around a 2.4%. So just from that valuation standpoint, it does look cheap. Now, I will say that REITs are, are going to have an issue uh, going into what I think is getting a recession. It could be a year, two years, or even longer. If you think about it, there's a lot of businesses that like to uh, be hybrid or have their employees stay at home. There's a lot of advantages to employees and even companies and, and saving money and saving overhead overall. Uh, but I think being in Los Angeles, I think there's still a need for companies to have a office space to go to for clients, get togethers. I do think that is something that is still a need, especially in that community. Uh, but it's just something to, to think about or be aware of as far as the valuation for this company. I think the intrinsic value is around $33, which is a 50% margin of safety. It's trading around $15, $16 here today. 
Uh, but REITs, uh, I think, again, are going to have a difficult time over the next year or two. Uh, but this is one that definitely looks interesting to me overall. All right, so those were the six stocks I wanted to talk about for December 2022. I'm curious from your guys' standpoint, do you own any of these stocks from Meta, from Douglas Emmett, to Warner Brothers, to Selenies, to Generac, to Stanley Black & Decker? Uh, I think all these stocks are of good value right now. Uh, this is just my opinion. Always do your own research. I'm just some guy on YouTube, so who knows if I'm right or not. Now, if you're curious on knowing how to value companies and also being part of a Discord that is really value investor oriented, go check out my Patreon in the link below. That gives you access to my Patreon page if you're interested. I do have posts and videos on there just for my Patreon members only. Also, you get access to my Discord channel. And you also get access to my valuation templates as well and the videos to show you how to use those valuation templates. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next video. Take care and God bless.